does this COVID-19 pandemic mean for the life sciences industry? You might think this would be a great time for anyone, even remotely connected to diagnostics. But in reality, let's call it nuanced. Take Agilent Technologies, letter A, the maker of instruments, software, services, and consumables for laboratories and research centers all over the world. These guys have really stepped up. When the Iowa Department of Human Services ran out of masks, one of their nearby facilities started 3D printing face masks. When it became clear we'd be short on hand sanitizers, Agilent started making its own. But a couple of days ago, Agilent had to withdraw its guidance for both the current quarter and the full year. Why? The company pointed to a quote, a significant disruption in business activity in late March, particularly in the U.S. and Europe, as customers closed or restricted access to the facilities in an effort to slow the spread of the virus, end quote. Even this industry is being hit by the lockdowns. But there's a lot more to this story. So let's check in with Mike McMullen. He's the president and CEO of Agilent Technologies to get a better read on how his company's coping with the crisis and what they're doing about it. This is Rick Mullen. Welcome to Mad Money. Hey, Jim. Thanks for having me on today. Well, first of all, I really appreciate that great overview of what the Agilent team is doing. Oh, uh, well, look, I, I'm honored to have Agilent on. I remember the day that you were spun off. At that point, the largest Silicon Valley spinoff from Hewlett Packard. You've always had the best science, which brings me to not the, the uh, change in guidance, but the fact that you are rising to the occasion. A lot of people are saying, why isn't testing happening faster? Why isn't it happening faster? You have stepped up to make it go faster with Bravo, correct? Absolutely. So thanks for the recognition on the team. So our team is answering the call here. We're open for business, answering the call, and the teams are really stepping up because they know they're working for a higher purpose. You mentioned our Bravo equipment. We've got to find ways to accelerate the flow of testing and also the number of testing kits that are out there available in the market. So as you know, Jim, we're playing a role in both places. You mentioned Bravo. That's an automation piece of equipment we have that makes the testing go faster. But you may not know what you actually provide key ingredients to the testing kits themselves. Well, I mean, when you do something, you have a, a great piece on your website called The Need for Speed. Uh, you, you do more testing, you do faster testing. But then, you know, sometimes uh, novices like me say, OK, well, look, they're talking about doing expediting sequences of uh, micro uh, uh, arrays. Now, I'm sure if I'm a doctor, I'm saying that's why things are going faster. But I need to understand what, what that means. Yeah, you're, you're exactly right, uh, Jim. You really have a good command of the science, I must say. And uh, really it all is about speed to answer. And uh, we talked about the automation uh, aspect of that, but you also mentioned the microarrays, and those products are actually made here in our Santa Clara fabrication area. And this allows us to look at multi-samples in one pass. So this also has a speed advantage as well. Now, do you guys just say, and this is what I'm I actually, this is, I'm doing a hopeful show tonight. But Agilent is a kind of company that I say, it says, all right, what do we have? What do we have in the arsenal that can, make, that can help beat COVID-19? People don't think we have these companies in this country anymore. But Agilent is one of those companies. A absolutely right. Uh, and this is so energizing for our team. I'm so happy to be able to share that with the audience today. You think about the three areas that we're in this battle with where science can really play a key role here to help out beating this uh, COVID-19. It's the area of virus research, virus testing we're just talking about, but also vaccine development. And we have some of the world's leading companies, including National Technologies, playing a key role in the development of these vaccines. So we are working with a number of our pharma partners with our team in Colorado, right here in the United States. All right, so Mike, you know that there is a group of people actually led by a uh, Sadly, because I went to Harvard, but the, Har but, uh, the Harvard Public Policy... I won't hold you against that. I'm a Wharton guy, so... Uh, but Wharton's more can do. The guys up at Harvard <laughs> keep telling me to say the public health people say, forget it. Everybody's going to get this thing. You know, many people are going to get it in the end. We're not going to be able to get that vaccine in time. Stop thinking it's going to be uh, a year to two. It's going to be three to five, if anything. You're in the thick of it. You know that we have great technology in this country. Are, where are you in the idea that maybe it's not just being optimistic and, uh, uh, and over-enthusiastic to believe that we might get something here. Yeah, Jim, I don't want to over, uh, underestimate, if you will, you know, the work that's involved to create a vaccine, but I'm actually very optimistic. And I have several of my Agilent board members are right in the thick of this as well with their, their companies. And we are looking at, across the industry, multiple ways to attack this problem. And I don't think it's a matter of if, it's just a matter of when. And it's going to happen, and it can't happen quickly enough, but we're delighted to be able to play a role in that. And I think uh, there's reason to be optimistic in the long run here. 
Now, in the meantime, you do have a sizable business in China, which hurt your previous uh, earlier in the year, but came back. And uh, why is China able to come back? Is it because it's a, a, a society that's tightly regulated by the government? Uh, what are they doing that they managed to be able to not flatten the curve, but pretty much eliminate the disease? Yeah, thanks uh, for that question, uh, Jim. And uh, as you may know, the China business is pretty important. In Iceland, over 20% of our revenues are in China, and it's been a great growth engine for the company of, over the last several years. But I can't speak to the Chinese society in general, but what I can speak to is what I've seen from the Agilent team. In fact, last week, Jim, through this wonderful tech, digital technology we have, I spoke to all 1,200 of our China team last week. And what I talked to them about was they set the example for the rest of Aslan by taking care of themselves during the worst of the pandemic and then finding ways to work with our customers on a, through digital platforms. And their business, now that they're returning back to work, is on coming back online. So they really have set the example for the rest of Aslan to follow. We're really proud of that team. At the same time, you did do, you came up with 3D masks, you came up with hand sanitizer. Was just, is that just because you guys have always been inventive? Oh, we love it. I mean, our teams just love a challenge. And uh, we said, listen, we have to do all we can to help our, our, those frontline healthcare providers. And we don't want to be taking uh, very important hand sanitizers away from them. Hey, we're a company of chemists. We can figure this out. And our team did in Folsom, California. Well, it's terrific. A company of chem chemists and inventors. We do invent things here. We do create things here. And we do step up when we have to. Mike McBullen, Agilent CEO, Letter A. Thank you so much, sir. Great that you have you on thank the show. Thank you very much, Jim. Very much appreciate it. Excellent. Okay, Mad Money's back after the break. Don't miss a second of Mad Money. Follow at Jim Kramer on Twitter. Have a question? Tweet Kramer. Hashtag Mad Tweets. Send Jim an email to madmoney at cnbc.com or give us a call at 1-800-743-CNBC. Miss something? Head to madmoney.cnbc.com.